Hi, I'm Dr. David Nowell, clinical neuropsychologist. Someone emailed me and said, David, I was at your workshop on ADHD, and I wonder if you could walk me through that thing that you said about music and dopamine. So to answer that question, I've created this video called Music is Ritalin. At the workshop, we discussed the smallest unit of the nervous system, which is the neuron, and we discussed the ways in which the cells communicate across the nervous system in the human body. Uh, the signal travels to the end of the axon and then is communicated to the dendrite of the next cell and so forth and so on. But check it out. The cells don't actually touch. There's a little gap or synapse between these two cells. The way in which a signal is transmitted very quickly across that synapse is a series of chemical reactions that involves neurotransmitters. One of the neurotransmitters we focused on in the workshop is dopamine. Dopamine is the target neurotransmitter for Ritalin and Adderall and Fortnite and TJ Maxx and Vyvanse and Crystal Meth and Candy Crush and Focalin. Dopamine is the neurotransmitter of booyah, of reward, of motivation, of drive. Um, some people have said dopamine is the pleasure chemical, but so is oxytocin and serotonin is definitely a pleasure chemical. Dopamine is a very specific kind of pleasure. And so maybe for us, a better picture of dopamine would be to consider what, what dopamine feels like. Um, I don't think my clients care much about the chemical structure of dopamine, but I do want them to care about what dopamine feels like because when we're doing activities that are rewarding, that are dopaminergic, think uh, snowboarding, think video games, we're unstoppable, we're hyper-focused, we can inhibit distractions. Especially if you have ADHD, you need to figure out what sets you on fire and then get up every morning and set yourself on fire. So this is the question for my clients. What does dopamine feel like in the body? So maybe a better picture would be this. What makes you feel this over the course of a day? The human brain is wired to really take pleasure in a short list of activities. One of those is to enjoy reading affect on other people's faces. We're good at it. Think how adaptive it would be if you were a hunter-gatherer, to be able to scan the faces of other people in your tribe, noticing subtle changes of emotion, which helps you collaborate and coordinate and solve problems. Now, many animals are capable of helpfulness and kindness and collaboration, but humans are what Dr. Jonathan Haidt calls the giraffes of altruism, an animal that is wired to take enormous pleasure in being helpful and collaborative and altruistic to people in our tribe and being horrible and violent to people outside of our tribe. If you've ever worked in a middle school or read user comments, you know how that still operates. Friendster and Multiply are examples of social media that aren't around anymore because they weren't sufficiently dopaminergic. They weren't addictive. The reason that Facebook is around after all these years is that it gives the hunter-gatherer brain what it wants. We wanna know that people in our tribe like us. So we come back to it over and over like a fawn coming to a clear pool of water in the forest. Lick, slurp, they like me. Now, if you've ever seen a child get to the next level of a video game, and you've seen how they shake and tremble, they look like someone who's taken a compound that increases dopamine. And in fact, video games increase dopamine in the human brain. He feels as though he's done something real and authentic and useful. He feels that he's dragging a juicy elk back to the tribe and we're gonna feast for days. Think about how much time you spent in 2009 playing Farmville. I got a fence, but you didn't write your thesis, but I got a fence. It felt in your brain like you'd done a real thing. So dopamine enjoys scanning human faces. Dopamine enjoys collaborating and um, we enjoy completing projects like pyramids, while we also enjoy video games, getting to the next level. Many of our hobbies and pastimes are actually setting up little problems for ourselves and then taking pleasure in solving them. An example would be a riddle. So here's a riddle. Uh, why shouldn't you write with a broken pencil? The answer, of course, because it's pointless. That frisson of pleasure that you may have felt, that's what I mean by what does dopamine feel like? You didn't feel it, you know, here crossing a synapse. You felt it somewhere in your body. Maybe you felt that. Let's do another one. In this slide, there is a problem. I want you to find the problem and pay attention to your body. Okay, the problem is, it says Paris in the, the spring. 
I'd like you to go back to that moment when you found the problem and recall what you felt in your body, especially if it took you a few seconds to find it. You're thinking, what's go? Oh, there it is. That moment when you went, oh, what did you feel in your body? And when I say feel, I don't mean uh, successful or happy or orgullo tan profundo. Those are just words. I'm literally asking, what did you feel and where did you feel it? But you didn't feel that. The music that we enjoy is predictable. Um, it is a repetitive. Music is essentially riddles. We enjoy predicting what's going to happen next in the music, and usually it does exactly what you thought it would do. For example, listen to this bit. Do you feel your brain predicting what's going to happen next? Just like a punchline to a riddle, the music does exactly what you thought it would do. The first time I heard these lyrics, I knew exactly what she was going to say next. This was my favorite song from middle school the first time I heard it. Yep, that's exactly what I thought she was going to say. And you get this little hit of dopamine. So when somebody says, hey, David, can my daughter listen to music while she does homework and studies? The answer is, duh, of course. We just proved that music is essentially Ritalin. Music is dopaminergic. But now, what music? What music is best for studying? I want to suggest to you that I would, would suspect that music without lyrics is best for studying because lyrics tend to draw your interest away. Music that has a lot of variety and change and music that's programmatic uh, would probably not be the best study music. You probably want music without lyrics, music that's repetitive. Having said that, run a study. Um, make a 30-minute playlist of music with lyrics and then music without lyrics and then study with each of those or if you have a student in your home, run the study with the student, and then at the end of that period, determine what works best for your brain. I invite you to take a look at my playlist at Spotify called Dopamine Window, drnowell.com. This is a playlist full of the kind of music that helps me focus. Uh, it bubbles along in the background, it's energizing, but it never pulls me in and causes me to actually get caught up in the music. My attention stays on the task at hand. There is a type of industrial music that is created to bubble along energetically in the background, uh, to be energizing, but never engaging. I'm talking about video game soundtracks. You can listen for three minutes or three hours and you never get pulled in. There's no bridge, there's no chorus. So wherever you get your music, SoundCloud, Spotify, whatever, YouTube, you can find playlists of video game soundtracks. If you're on Spotify, you can look at my soundtracks for studying drnowell.com and then just take one of these and cut paste edit make it fit your own brain style what types of music allow you to engage and focus and study for long periods of time so there you go music is riddling uh, if you like this content check me out my website's drnowell.com engage with me at twitter um, tell me what's working for you tell me how you tweak this kind of stuff disagree with me but definitely engage and uh, like, let's make this a community thing. What works for our brain? Thanks a lot.